Hello all and welcome to the first lecture for HCS 103 Fields of Practice. Uh, you would have all met me uh, within the welcome video. I must apologise today I'm a little bit croaky in the throat but I'm sure we'll get through it. The weekly lectures within this subject will be fairly short, always under half an hour, probably around the 20 minute mark. I know that we all lead really busy lives, but I also know that a lot of people learn really well through face-to-face -face lecturing and it all comes down to those individual adult learning styles we have. Uh, as an alternative to listening to the lecture, I'll also be uploading the PowerPoint slides if you'd prefer to peruse through them at your own pace. If you have any questions um, from the lecture, or from the content in the PowerPoint slides, please jump onto the forum and let me know. Um, I will be answering these questions um, outside of the lecture, of course. So firstly, I'd like to talk a little bit about contacting me this session. Um, so as you already in the subject outline, if you do have a question related to the subject, please at the first point of call post on the forum. I do monitor these forums really regularly and chances are if you have a question, another student would have the same question. It would be really helpful to answer it in the one place. As I mentioned in my welcome video, it's a really large cohort and I think we can really support each other in learning this session. Um, if you do need to speak to me about a private matter, please email me. That way I've got a record of our contacts and I can chase it up. Alternatively, my desk phone number's on the, this slide as well. Um, and I am on campus Monday to Friday. Um, just a little side note though, that um, if you do contact me outside business hours, I may not respond straight away. I really had to, for my own sort of self-care, make that um, really clear to myself. Um, I found myself sort of checking emails at all hours and on weekends and that sort of thing and as you can see from my pictures I've got a family and a, a life outside work as well so um, I needed to be really clear that I'm not available 24 7 um, but I mean if the matter is urgent I will get back to you um, within good time. So the aims basically of today are to give you a little bit of an overview of the subject and the subject materials, uh, talk about some expectations around engagement online and your subject materials and written assessments. So I'll go straight on into it. HCS 103 is one of those really core subjects in your social work or social welfare. And I actually saw on the forum, we've got people from criminology in all different areas. It's one of those core base level subjects that give a really good overview of the field and some of the key knowledge bases that you'll need. Um, you'll notice that I don't read too much from the slides, it can get a little bit tedious and you've got them there as well to read over yourself. So sort of just ad-lib these lectures. Um, but yeah, again, let me know if you need any clarification. So you, you've all um, had a look at your subject outline. Uh, I've drafted up a bit of a study schedule for this session. It's not great, it's not amazing, but it's got all the information you need there. It's not high tech or anything, but it's basically outlines each week what the activities are uh, and the readings and that sort of thing. Um, you've got your learning modules, which you can all access uh, at the moment and the resources folder. So I must stress the resources folder is an ongoing um, resource that will grow throughout session and change and develop and I'll add to it. And um, please feel free to give me anything that you'd like to share with peers and I'll pop it in there if it's appropriate to the subject as well. Um, announcements, you've heard a little bit from me already in terms of announcements, but there'll also be Adobe Connect sessions. So I'll talk about what they look like a little bit more when we get closer, our first one being in week two. Um, I'll give you some idea around what they'll look like. The prescribed textbook as noted on your homepage at the moment is Conley and Harp, so Social Work Context and Practice, the third edition. But as I wrote in the subject outline, if you've got another edition, that's completely fine as well. Um, little sneaky tip is I tend to be able to source these textbooks on other websites other than the primary university co-op and they have quite quick posting as well. So if you Google the textbook name, you can get it quite quick um, and after pay on some of these websites too, which is very new and exciting. Um, please, please make sure you're referencing correctly. Um, and there's a little link here as well as so the APA referencing guide. Pop that in your favourites because it's going to be really useful through all of your university studies. And I often find myself still sort of going back to it sometimes now with all these different web-based resources and uh, different ways of referencing and different types of 
articles or books. Um, it's really useful just to refresh and make sure you're on the right track with your referencing. So this subject has two written assessment items, as you'll be aware from your subject outline. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm flicking through slides here at a furious pace. Um, your first assessment, we're really looking at three 600 word short answer questions. Um, the idea behind this is, and it's in week five, so it's not too early in session where you're still sort of getting your head around the subject, but it's early enough to be able to give you some really good feedback on your firstly writing, um, your grasp on the content and that sort of thing. So I'm really interested in getting all of those assignments in by week five and getting that feedback back to you. So there'll be written feedback on your assignments, but there'll also be verbal generalized feedback uh, in a podcast to all of you. Um, and some inbuilt supports around that assignment time too. We'll be doing special Adobe Connect sessions and I'll do a lecture explaining the assignment as well. So there'll be lots more to come in the next few weeks around the assignment. Just some general expectations, I guess, at this point um, in terms of assignments. You do need to be able to research and reference your work properly, so please utilise that link so applied on the previous slides, um, as well as the Allen team. So there's, it's, uh, I've actually posted some things in your resources folder. Peruse those. The Allen team isn't just for students who are struggling with language and literacy and numeracy. It's for all students. Um, I have colleagues completing a PhD at the moment and they're accessing Allen. Um, they've got this wonderful service where you can actually email off your draft of your assignment and get it emailed back within 24 hours with some advice and guidelines around referencing and grammar. And it's just an amazing service that I would really encourage you all to access. So, um, just looking over, is there anything else? No, it's kind of all on the slide, other things that you need to know around expectations. Um, in terms of the online environment, it may be something that's fairly new to some of you. A lot of the technologies are fairly uh, new to me. Things are changing all the time in online education. And I've um, come from a practice background, but also a background of teaching internally for uh, many years. And getting your head around with all of the online things is, is a little tricky, um, but we get there and we work there to get work on getting there together as well. So please make use of the forum. I can't stress this enough. I do regularly check it as a lot of you might have noticed already I won't be responding to every single post that's made um, often this isn't needed but I mean you've got your pe peers there as well that respond to posts if you ask me a question I'll of course respond um, but if it's a response to say a learning activity and it um, I won't be responding to all of them I, I really love if you could respond to your peers though I think it's really nice and encouraging and generates that great discussion so please engage in that um, announcements. Oh, I try not to overrun you with announcements, but I definitely make them at least on a weekly basis. So you'll see one from me generally each Friday talking about what's happening in the coming week um, and then sporadically through session as well. Um, I think it's important to note keeping in mind online um, etiquette, so being really constructive, respectful and purposeful. The same as you would in a face-to-face -face class, please be really respectful. But also, I think um, we sometimes run a fine line between being really respectful and not um, challenging our thinking as well. I think it's really important to engage in those important conversations at the same time um, in a respectful manner. So I really feel like I've been speaking too much to you all in this lecture, um, but we're sort of, we're sitting at the eight minute mark, so probably about halfway in what we're going to be doing today. Um, just wanted to cover some terminology and some of this you can really um, learn for yourself as well through the learning modules and the external links I've supplied in there. Um, but human services is a broader term for a range of professionals aimed to enhance quality of life. So as you know from the first topic, it covers a gamut of different jobs and professions and fields and there's some really good um, information on the ACOS site. Um, as well as ASW site in terms of what a social worker is specifically. So um, I myself am a social worker and an active member of the ASW, uh, but teach across um, social work and the human services. 
Um, and welfare workers, as you've noticed, a lot of you are in the field, um, come from a variety of backgrounds, some with no formal education, a lot of with life experience, um, some TAFE qualification, junior qualification, it really does vary. So we're working in a field of quite diverse knowledge bases, which is really exciting, I think. Um, and it's, it makes the human services quite distinct from other professions. Um, and again, I'm sorry I'm a little bit throaty today. I think I've caught the bug my kids had last week. Um, but defining social welfare work, um, there's some really good definitions on the ASW site. So the link there is for you all to have a look at as well. Um, so social welfare and social work practice requires a knowledge of human development and behaviour. So that's why you've got those sort of psych subjects and um but behavioral based subjects in your first couple of years at uni um, social economic and cultural institutions so you'll often be studying sociology concurrently with psychology um, as well as core welfare social work type subjects as well as well as how the individual social cultural economic and political factors interact and impact on a situation so um, if you could just read the key point down there, I'll just, I'm very conscious I'm losing my um, voice at the moment, so I'll just have a quick drink. <clears throat> um, note to self, don't record a lecture when you're <laughs> losing your voice. <laughs> um, but basically, social welfare workers do a whole gamut of different things, as you're all really aware. Um, help people increase their problem solving and coping, help obtain resources, facilitate interventions between um, individuals, people and their environments, um, influencing social policy, social action. I couldn't possibly sort of list everything on this one slide of what social welfare workers can do. Um, and I know already from the forums that you've all shared different areas that you work or are interested in. So it's really building up that picture of the vastity of it all. Um, so social welfare workers try to enhance opportunities for people in an increasingly complex world as well. And we have the responsibility to promote um, human functioning in a responsive and just society. Um, we need to really, as workers, be have a clear understanding of the way things are and the way things could be. So I've popped a little bit of a cloud picture down there because I think that's a really good point to reflect upon and have a think about in our practice and in our learning. So I've got a little bit here about the role of social work. Um, I won't go too much into that, but it's a great quote from um, IFIN 99. So please um, source further information on that if you are interested. The good thing about online learning and I mean adult learning in general is that you can learn as much or as little as you want so you can go and get more information and follow up resources and be really self-directed in your learning in addition to engaging with the learning materials provided. So we talk in social work, <coughs> again losing my voice, um, about different levels of practice. So you'll be hearing this throughout your degree and throughout this subject, but we talk about the micro level. So the micro level of practice is that one-on-one -on -one individual face-to-face -face type work with families and small groups. It's your clinical practice stuff. We've got the meso level of social work. So that's um, working sort of within an organization and formal groups. So, so um, that next level up. Your macro level looks at communities, large government, social change, that social policy and research level of practice, and also your professional level, which is a fairly new conceptualization in this, but it's a system of social work professions. So we're, we're bound by a code of ethics and, and have different committees and that sort of thing, as you would have read in your first topic. Um, before I lose my voice too much more, um, that's me for today. Um, I do have references at the end of these slides. So like I said, if you are really interested in any of this, chase it up. Um, do a little bit more reading. Um, I know that there's a whole lot within the modules, so above and beyond what's in the modules might be a big call. Uh, there's a sort of endless rabbit warren of readings I've supplied in the modules. And I guess my note on that is don't feel like you have to complete all of everything that's in there. The great thing about this subject is you can sort of be very self-directed in where, what you want to do and how much you want to do. You don't need to be posting on the forums all the time. If you're not comfortable with that, you don't need to be reading absolutely everything that I've supplied. I'm going to be supplying a lot of different um, learning opportunities and activities and how you engage and 
use those is completely up to you as an adult learner. So I will again be speaking to you in my week two lecture, but between then you'll hear from me on the forums and in announcements as well. Um, so looking forward to it. Speak soon. Thanks for listening.